Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and even another episode on our Atomus Waved Dreamcast game series. And today we're taking a look at Ranger Mission, which is, well, it's really just not the best game whatsoever, but I'm talking about all the Atomus Waved Dreamcast games and I want to be comprehensive, so let's get into Ranger Mission. But before we do that, if you can do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out, and if you feel so inclined, I have a Patreon link down there as well if you want to support the channel. So Ranger Mission is one I played in arcades before, and when I played it in arcades, I didn't like it then, and I really still don't love it now. The best part about being able to play it on a Dreamcast, though, is that I don't have to put quarters into this game. Because Ranger Mission has a great concept. You have different types of gameplay styles. You'll see right here in the first stage you have to shoot enemies in the order in which they appear. But this game is just brutally difficult. Some enemies just run and pop out so quickly that while you're focusing on one thing, you don't even get the chance to shoot the other enemy. This is the first stage of the first area in the game. It should be one of the easier ones. And granted, I was having a little bit of accuracy problems with my gun. Sometimes this game just doesn't give you the time to actually hit anything, which can be really frustrating. I mean, granted, it is an arcade game, and they definitely want to take your quarters, but now that we have it at home with that arcade difficulty, actually getting good at this game can be relatively frustrating. And that's not to say that this game is bad. It is entertaining, and if you like light gun games like I do, there is a lot of fun to be had with it. It's just really hard to feel like you're actually doing a good job when you're playing this game. Because moving on here, we have a sniper segment, even though we're probably only like 50 yards away. It's not really a sniping distance, I would suppose. But we need to hit 23 different enemies here. And if you miss even one or two, those guys running up the stairs, I missed one, that's going to totally screw you over. And enemies are going to hide behind trees. Those trees have massive hitboxes. You're going to hit the tree versus the enemy. And like I said, a few guys go by, and now we have 18 of 23. We missed five. We're going to fail. And that's the big issue with this game, is even when you're playing well, it is so easy to fail an individual mission and then to fail the entire mission at the end, which is disappointing. And now moving inside, we have a, you know, machine gun, a lot easier to hit enemies, they're popping in and popping out. But that timer, even when you're playing near perfect, I will finish a stage with maybe a second left if I'm actually going to succeed at it. And I think this game just was too hungry for quarters in arcades. I have like a joking, you know, arcade, you know, quarter munching scale. One being they're basically giving away the game for free and five being they're going to take you out back, steal the money out of your wallet and kick you in the you know where. This game is definitely a five. And that's not as big of a deal when you're playing at home because you're not actually putting money in the game. But when you're trying to be good at the game and trying to really get a feel for it, it's hard to be able to complete this. Because you'll see, I ran out of time and I thought I was doing pretty well. And that's not to blame the game for all of this. You know, if I practiced this and I played through the game 10 times, I would get much better. But it's also just not the type of game that makes me want to come back for a replay. I'll play this once, maybe twice, but it's not something that I'm going to, in six months, sit down and say, I want to play some Ranger Mission on Dreamcast. If I want to play a Dreamcast light gun game, I'm going to play something like House of the Dead 2, or Confidential Mission, or Virtual Fighter 2. And even some of the other Atomus Wave games that have light gun elements, like the Sports Shooting Challenge, I'm going to want to play those more. So I would only ever pick this back up if I was really bored and really wanted to play a light gun game and I had played everything else. And you'll see here now that we transition into the final mission, we have a rocket launcher with unlimited ammo, and we have a minute and 10 seconds. But every time that tank hits you, you're going to lose 10 seconds, and it's going to hit you, because when the missiles come in, trying to hit them from the tank is near impossible. And this tank is a, well I call it a bullet sponge, but it's actually a rocket sponge. It just keeps taking abuse. I finished the mission with less than one second on the clock, less than half a second. And that's what you're going to find in this game. Outside of a few random stages, if you do succeed, you are going to do it by having less than a second left. I got an F on that mission, and I'm relatively good at light gun games, so I feel like this is the game fighting me. But then you do stuff like go into mission one in the second sequence, and now you just have unlimited rapid fire grenades, and I'm going to destroy this stage. I'm going to take it out super easily. So it's a really an odd game as far as flow is concerned. The first mission in the first area of the game is going to be one of the hardest. And then when you get to the first mission in the second area of the game, magically you're just going to be able to spam grenades and finish. I think I probably had like 32 seconds left on the clock when I was done. 
So this game's kind of flow and trajectory. It gets really easy in some spots and hard in the others, and it doesn't make much sense. What I'll let you do is watch the next segment just so you can hear a little bit of the music, and I'll be back in about a minute, and we'll close out on Ranger Mission. Enjoy. Roger that. For sure. Move. Don't move too far forward. Get down. Freeze. Get down. And you'll see we did pass that stage, we did it with the skin of our teeth. And I feel like I could be a lot better at this game if the game gave me slightly more time to be better at it. And I'm not blaming the game entirely, but when those areas come up where you have to hit targets in the order in which they appear, one of the three of them is usually going to be sprinting across the screen, sometimes just in the corner, and you have like half a second to be able to hit them. So you could get better at this game, but you'd have to basically memorize where all the different enemies come from because you're not going to be able to do it on instinct alone. And it's really hard. I mean, memorizing an arcade shmup, totally fine. Memorizing the moveset for an arcade fighting game makes perfect sense. Memorizing enemy placement for a light gun game, not as important and not as big of an element in the genre. And you'll see there's a couple different mechanics like shooting the hinges off doors, but otherwise this game feels the same at the end as it does the beginning. They're going to keep recycling the same four types of stages. They're going to recycle the same types of enemies throughout the entire thing, and you're just going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Do I recommend you play this game? Well, if you're in an arcade and you see it, no, I don't. It's just going to take your money. It's relatively fun for a few minutes, but it's not something that's really going to make you want to sit there and play till the end. But do I recommend you download this and put it on your optical disc emulator or emulate it so you can play it at home? Of course I do. It's amazing that these Atomic Wave games are running on Dreamcast. Big thanks to Megavolt 85 for pulling that off. So just to be able to experience something that we never thought we'd be able to play at home unless you bought the arcade board, that is great. Would I recommend you buy an Atomic Wave and the arcade board and the guns for this game to play it at home? No. Definitely don't do that. It's not cheap. It's not worth it. There's so many other ways you can spend your money that would be better. But I wanted to make a video for each and every one of these Thomas Wave games that are coming over to Dreamcast, and Ranger Mission gets one. But if you have any questions, leave them down below. I love chatting with you guys. We will be back on Friday and Sunday and Tuesday with more videos, and we will have a few more Thomas Wave to Dreamcast game videos coming up. But we're down to our last few, and unless some of the more other ones that haven't been ported got brought over, we're going to run out. And I know people keep saying these aren't ports. I get it. It's just the easiest word to use. You're just executing code on a different platform. But short of that, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.